Okay, YouTube, we're back in the shop today. Today we're talking 7018. Uh, we've got some Hobart filler wire, uh, eighth inch. There's the specs on her. Uh, 7018 is a low hydrogen rod. You'll often hear it called low high and spelled two different ways. The 70 in the 7018 is the tensile strength. So 70,000 PSI tensile strength. The one in the 7018 tells you all positions. And the eight is coating. So the flux coating, which is a low hydrogen. That's where it gets its nickname, low high. Potassium and then iron powder. And the dash one is a mechanical properties. So that is AC or DC polarity. And these and the dash one means either or, so AC or DC polarity. Now I'm not real familiar with Hobart 7018, I've ran a lot of Lincoln 7018, but we're going to set up, do some tests. Uh, the box here tells us between 90 and 150 amps, so we're going to start about 95 and see how that runs. And we're gonna run a few warm up passes, kinda of get everything set up, and then we'll go on to some thicker, thicker plates, this is three quarter, and we'll do some stringer beads. Okay, so that is a little sticky. We might have to turn up some, uh, some arc force on that. And I did hear from uh, General Air when I bought these that these are kind of hard to start from Hobart so let's give it a shot so it probably didn't help that the steel is probably about 40 degrees for the starting um, that felt pretty smooth once I got going. We'll chip it just to see. Looks like it's a little cold. So I bumped up to 110 amps. Get some of that flux off of there. So the reason I'm showing you the start and getting my settings correct is because I don't like to remember settings. Every machine's going to be a little different. Uh, temperatures, atmosphere, you know, the temperature around you is going to change how everything's welding. If your rods are old or got a little bit of moisture in them, that's going to change how they flow. I don't like to memorize settings because depending on the situation you might have to adjust a little. Okay, so it's a lot better. Uh, could use a little more heat so I'm going to go ahead and bump her up another 10 on the amps. So we'll be running 120. I've always liked to weld a little hotter than normal. Got a little bit of electrode left. Let's finish her off. So that felt real good. The start on these is terrible. Uh, we'll see what we can do in the settings to adjust for that. But. The slag is a little sticky. I probably could have let it cool off a little longer, but that's not too bad. So we'll go ahead and get set up for our thick plates and start running stringers. These three quarter inch pieces have a lot of mill scale on them. You can see the darker coating. 
versus the saw cut side, nice and shiny. So we're gonna go ahead and grind that and prep this, just so we don't get any slag, slag inclusions or porosity or anything like that. The cleaner, the better. So I cleaned up both sides and a little bit on the, the mating edge here, just so it doesn't try to draw in some of those contaminants. And as thick as this steel is and as cold as it is, I might have to adjust the settings a little bit. Okay, so since these are being such a pain to start, I'm going to go ahead and grind a little bit of flux around the edge there just to get a better start. That arc was getting a little unstable towards the end. Uh, I might have to move my ground clamp. Might be getting a little bit of arc blow. That sat in there pretty good. We'll do the other side and then run some stringers. Uh, we're doing both sides just so it doesn't pull pull the plate with the heat. So the end seemed a little better. I never moved the ground clamp. It could be because the uh, plates are a little warmer from the first pass. See the slag there popping off. So if you're going to learn to weld some 7018, the best thing to do is what we're going to do right here, and that's just lay in a pass on a T-joint, and then we're going to run another pass, and we're going to do stringers. So the next pass is going to be right in the seam between the weld toe and the base metal, and your next pass will be on the upper toe and the base metal. And we're going to just keep doing that. So, basically, if this is our joint, we're going to have our root pass, two stringers. Ideally three and then you just keep working your way up as you fill up The weld joint so let's try it now 
I've got about a third of the rod left here, so I'm going to use that and we're going to do a start tie-in. Probably somewhere in here by the time we're done with this guy. Jeez. Stuff is hard to start. So now you can kind of start to see the weld profile. And anytime I do a tie-in, I make sure there's no slag left in there because you can get inclusions, slag inclusions from that tie-in. So everything's still hot. We're going to go ahead and fire up our second third of a rod. It's kind of pushing the end there just because I was getting low on rod. Now we'll run one more pass. On top of that last pass. And we're using gravity to our benefit. Even though you can weld these rods in any position, we're going to lay right in there. Okay. Okay, practice time lapse. Go. There you have it, YouTube stringer beads with 7018. Done. So just for comparison purposes, I pulled out some old 7018 Lincoln, and this is the 16th. But 
we're going to try this and see if the sticking problem is uh, just with Hobart or with Lincoln 2. Also, these are um, 7018 AC, and then I also turned the Mighty Sub down to about 80, 80 87. So we'll see. Okay. Super cold. I'm going to turn it way up. About 99 now. Let's see how our uh, our restart does. So much nicer on the restart. Sorry, Hobart. Let's do it again. That was a little rough, but... Sometimes better is just better. Thanks for watching.